So Chris, we're here at Morstead Stables. You've, you've been here, what, how many years? 15 now? 15, yeah, we've, we moved in 2007. And you bought the place of Brendan Powell, was he here? Yeah, before? Brendan, so it was a, it's been a rented property for, forever. Yeah. And he's on a two and a half thousand acre estate. And then the opportunity came up to buy it in 2013. So best move I ever did in life. Good stuff. And it's, it's really lovely, lovely atmosphere. Isn't it? Great atmosphere, yeah. Great team you've got. And I say it's the best thing. It's the second best thing I've ever did in my life because the first one would have been marrying the wife. Yes. But um, yeah, Jenny, no, no. The lovely Jenny. The lovely Jenny. The long suffering Jenny. Long suffering Jenny. <laughs> um, I know it's a great atmosphere here. We've got a great, great bunch of staff and hopefully onwards and upwards. Yeah, I mean, it seems to me as though the, the, the quality of the horses has improved a lot over the last two or three years. I mean, you've got some really good depth here now, haven't you? Yeah, I might, might. If we go back five years ago, the average value of the average value of a horse in our yard was eight thousand, and and you know I just felt very much that we were banging our head against a brick wall, and we've had a few one or two better horses. And you think, God, you know, got to get people to spend some more money, and um, and we've just gently been increasing and um, you know spending a little bit more money, and I, I do all the buying myself, and. Um, and it's, it's certainly worked, you know, we've, we've got a much better strength and depth for horses. Funny enough, a Lanzarote was one I had in my head for this, but it's this month and uh, we're going to be at a quieter month this month with flu jabs and a few snotty noses and things, so we'll just be a little bit quieter. So, uh, so if we miss Lanzarote and then we might try and find a, a nice chase for him anyway next time. OK, so the bet for Hurdler repeat at that, he ran well in it last year, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he, he'd really want a little bit further than that. Okay. It's a little bit sharp for him, so he, he'd want um, he'd want me to move the winning post about another two or three <laughs> furlongs, you know. Okay. I'm not sort of blowing smoke here, Chris, but I think you place them so well. Oh, you really I love do. a bit of a smoke being blown up. Yeah. Um, but no, but no, you, thank you. You do all you. that yourself, don't you? Yeah, I, I, do, I do, yeah. do that myself. You know, it's like at the end of the day, it's, ama it's amazing. There's some trainers that... Oh, you know, they, 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 it's, um, they send horses to be broken away. We, you know, like we would send ours to be broken away now. Mm. But um, a lot of people send them away to teach them how to jump. Uh, a lot of people get people to pick their races. A lot of trainers get other people to train their horses. But no, I like to, everything to, we do here very much. We keep it very close, myself and Jen. Mm. And it's, a, it's been a steady flow of winners the last few seasons as well, hasn't it? Yeah, I think you know, it's... We've gradually had, getting better and yeah, better. Yeah, de definitely. And... And that's that's the way we want to go. And fingers crossed, we can keep slowly moving that way. But <clears throat> excuse me, this last year we've had in 2022, we had 63 winners under rules, and I think it was that's 13 point to point, isn't it, in the yard of our size? Yeah. That's great, and I'll be I'll be proud of that, and I'll be proud of my team and and my sponsors, which make a huge difference to it. So Chris, um, Orkin Risque, he's been in great form recently, hasn't he? What, yeah, a, what, what a great form. run last time. He, and he always has. Ever since we've had him, he's been a smashing horse. But, but generally, um, from his very early bumpers, he's just progressed every single run. And I'd be very, very proud of it. When a horse does that, he's, as you can see, he's not the biggest horse in the world. Oh. So I keep thinking the progression is probably going to stop, but he doesn't. He just keeps on in improving every single run. So very proud of what we've achieved so far. Yeah, and what would you have in mind for him? Because he's, I mean, he's a Saturday horse, isn't he? He's going yeah, to be running very, in, a, very much so. in some so, big races. So his chases this year, you know, we, we, we started off at Utoxita and um, I wasn't too sure about his jump. He got his bum very high and so we worked on that. And, and Flick actually rides him every day. She had an awful lot of schooling on him. So um, the hair flying everywhere, but the two of them seem <laughs> to dash up there and they've improved and improved in, together, thank God. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, so and then he came out and he, he ran at Newbury and his jumping was so much better. And in the wayward lad the other day at Kempton, his, his, mm. he couldn't fault his jumping. The jumping was fantastic. So he ran a blind up, beaten by just a length by Boot Hill. If we met him in the handicap, I think we'd, we would have been nine pounds better off, but we won't go into that too much. But um, we've got on the 28th of January, there's, there's the Lightning, I think it's called, a grade two at Doncaster, uh -huh. which would be two miler up there to be very... A, a nice track for him, I think. Good sharp two miles, and uh, my God, he, you know when he gets out and novice, it gets out and jumps. We'd be very keen on going there, but if if that comes a bit too soon, we, we might well go straight to the Grand Annual. Okay, at great. The Cheltenham Festival. Yeah, fabulous. Well, he's earned his place there, hasn't he? Yeah, he certainly has. So we yeah. see how we go. But it would just be nice to before something like the Grand Annual to get one more bit of experience over fences. 
So how many horses have you got in now, Chris? We'd probably have a sort of 55 under rules right. and, and the wife would have five point pointers here. Yeah. So we've actually, with the yards full, and I've got another six tables going up, um, hopefully this month. Good. And uh, it, Tom Cannon was here this morning. He rides a lot of your horses, doesn't he? And you, yeah, use, it's, it's, you use a lot of good ones, don't you? A lot of the lads want to ride for you, which is a great sign. Yeah, well, Tom, Tom's been with us well, since he really sort of, well, his very first winner was for us. Was it? And yeah. I, I think he'd been down to pipes. It just didn't go too well. And he'd moved around a wee bit. Look, you know, it's great. To, you know, he's, he's, he's like a son to me, as much as you can get. And it's, um, it's great to see him doing so well now. So, you know, we, we fall in. We're, we're second yard here to him. And, you know, other people get on the horses. But generally, Tom will get back on. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about this Highway 102. Um, yeah. I mean, he took on Constitution Hill last time, out for goodness sake. But he ran all right, didn't he? Christmas hurdle. Yeah. No, but that, that really... wasn't your first plan, was it? No, I was really, really pleased with the horse. I put him in the against Constitution Hill for some prize money, and uh, he ran an absolute blinder. Finished third, I think he picked up 16,000. Um, six lengths behind Epitont. Epitont, so, um, yeah. So, no, he ran, ran a smashing race, smashing race. Handicapper left him alone, as he, as he should do, you know. Yeah. And um, so looking forward to next time. We'll probably go with him to the Betfair. It's a race I've actually tried to win it a couple of times. Yeah. And we had uh, Remelak was third and then I've had two fourths in it, two quite close fourths. Just can't quite win it. And um, whether he's handicapped enough to win a race like that, well, we would have to see. And I think maybe he might be slightly more comfortable going right. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, well, well, you know, as, as it is, you know, we might well go there. We might have a day at Cheltenham with him as well for the um, Coral County, Cup. County Hurdle County or, or Coral Cup? Cup. Co Co County Hurdle, two-miler. Right, keep him at um, two. Yeah, yeah, we were second yeah. in that with Remark Loads of pace. Well, so, uh, yeah. yeah, he's very sharp over two. We can get out and rock and roll and see how we are. But, you know, he's not getting any younger. He's eight, 143. It's, it's tough, you what know. What about you, Chris? What, what's the ambition? Keep the business going. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's funny, but, you know, it, people always... Um, you judged on your results and uh, people think you're doing very, very well when uh, you're having winners, but they don't see that business side behind it, you know, and you've got to, you've got to keep very much your, your current um, clients happy and, um, and just sometimes you're going to go through bad spells, but as long as you keep everybody in that business going, that's the most important thing in life, isn't it, you know? But um, obviously, I want to keep progressing forward at the moment. Um, you never know which direction life's going to take you but at the moment things are going really well um, we've got six more stables going up um, I've actually got six more horses to come in but we will you know and then I, I think about slowly slow progression you know good good well fingers crossed it keeps going in the right direction fingers for crossed it's been great being here this morning on behalf of Beck Goodwin so thank you very much for having us Chris. Right. many many thanks don't forget Beck Goodwin